welcome back. This is Cindy with Moonfire Studios. Thank you for joining me today. And I thought we would do something a little different today. I'm going to be making a card, which I do like to do. And over on Craft World, which I'm a member of, um, we have a random card sending group in the Coffee Break discussion. If you are interested, head on over there. My uh, handle is at Lumaniac, L-O-O-M-I-A-C. Um, if you want to look me up specifically, I will link a, um, I will put a link below uh, to Craft World for you if you would like to join. Um, it's free to join, and it's just like a really cool platform where uh, crafty people all over the world get together and chat and have discussions. You can post on your own profile. It's actually a very nice community. Um, so I highly recommend heading over there. But today I thought I would make a neat fall card. I got this new um, picket fence stamp which I really love. It's a collage stamp. I love that little crow and the pumpkins and things. Um, it is Harvest Autumn Harvest Collage F-141. I hope that's in focus. Um, I did get it from Marco's Paper and Crafts per my usual modus operandi um so let's get started with it and what i'm going to be doing is i've got some fabric for a layer i've got some ribbon i have my pinking shears some ink i have a few dies um and I will show you those as I go along with everything. And my card base is a square. It is six by six. Um, I like to have my square cards open horizontally versus vertically because if I like to put a lot of layers in. So what does it do when you stand up? It goes weak. So, um, I turn mine sideways to open this way so they stay a little sturdier and stand up better. Um, so we'll set that off to the side. I will just be stamping on um, a plain smooth 80 pound, um, I think that's 160 GSM, don't quote me. Um, I'm not very good at remembering my conversions, um, so but it is it's a thicker cover cardstock um, because I am going to be using some watercolor pencils to color to just kind of add some hint of colors to the collage to make it a little more fall like. Um, so I will be stamping on that with my stamping platform and I'm just going to chop some of this off, not all of it because I'm going to trim it up. stamping platform I use is from Crafters Companion. As you can see, I have a lot of purple products. Um, I really like their products and they've held up with me for quite a long time. So I am rather impressed with theirs. The reason I chose this stamping platform, however, is because this piece completely separates from the bottom piece. So I can keep my stamp on here and I'll actually show you.
it has another thing. It has a grid attached permanently, you know, put on the bottom as well as permanently put on the top. So I'm not guessing which line I put anything on. So I can center this if I want to. I'm just going to roughly line it up there because it's there. But because it's separate, put down, you can rotate the top platform if you have rotating stamps or if you have a design that you want to rotate you can just put it say you have a saying a one word saying hello you can put your one word saying this way and it will stamp here you can rotate it it will stamp here you can rotate it it will stamp here you don't have to turn your paper take it off figure out where you want it again it's very simple I'm putting this roughly where I want it to be because I am trimming this down. You can be precise as you want to with this one. And it comes with four circular magnets that are uber strong. So what I did was I put washi tape around them with a little tab so they can pick them up. If you don't have that, just slide it off the end. Also, this goes up to an 8 by 8 inch or a 20 by 20 centimeter grid. However, if you have a long sheet, you can put it in between the plungers. Or you can rotate it so that your corners poke out from over the edge. You're not as limited as you are with different stamping platforms. Now you can put it on its top inside there to ink it up. Um, today I am using the Finesse Waterproof Guy by Spectrum Noir in Noir Black because I like it and I want this to be black and as I said I'm going to be using watercolor pencils so this will work brilliantly. Put that off to the side. Just ink it up. And there's my image. This is supposed to be like that. If you can see, I don't know if you can see. It's supposed to be that way. If I want to, I can just very easily flip it over, ink it up again, flip it over again, and do that. But I'm very happy with that stamp. And then to clean it, just a microfiber cloth, guys. You don't have to use chemicals. You don't have to always wash it off with soap and water because if you don't get it perfectly dry and you put it away, it can mold. So just rub it. Now, this was the first time I used this stamp, so it stains. It's normal. It's okay. That will happen for all your clear stamps. It's not that there's any ink still on there. It's just because it's stained either the clear acrylic or the photopolymer. Also, if you see inside a store 
or if it happens to you, your photopolymer stamps are yellow. That's okay too. It just means they were in direct sunlight for like five minutes. It's gonna happen and it's not harmful to the stamp. There is nothing wrong with your stamp. You can still use it, you can still buy it because when you ink it, it's gonna turn colors anyway. So that's my little stamping rant of the day. <laughs> Thank you for putting up with me. <laughs> okay, we'll stick you back on there. Stick you back on your carrier. Okay. And again, this was by Picket Fence, one of their harvest stamps. Okay. In case you're wondering, this is what the bottom looks like, and there are really big, soft, grippy things, so when you put it down, it slides, but when you press down, it doesn't. So it doesn't scratch your glass mat or anything. Okay. So, I'm going to watercolor this before I do anything else to make sure that I get it how I want it. And I just put some water there for so when I'm ready for it. And I'm using the Aqua Blend Spectrum Noir watercolor pencils. I've chosen these two color palettes um, for the crow. I'm actually going to make him more of like a raven. So I am going to use opal blue for him and what I'm just going to do is I'm actually going to I do things in different manners so oh I know what I wanted to do I'm not done with the stamp yet I want to stamp out this um this um maple leaf here so let me do that really quick and I'll just show you another method to do that. So I'm just going to get my purple stamping mat. a block which is just an acrylic stamping block but it's curved and it has these little rocker um, edges on it also from crafters companion I should just be a walking talking ad but I know other people that are friends of mine that are just as bad maybe even worse than me so we're gonna stick that onto there and I'm just going to ink up where the leaf is. I made that really, really juicy. Oops. Anywho. And then all you do with this one is you put it on its heel. And just as the name implies, rock it to the other side. Do not press flat because if you press flat, you're not going to get the edges of your design because this is bowed. It is designed and made to rock from heel to toe. Wow, I'm really ranty today about stuff. Sorry. 
just, you know, whack me for that one. Whap. Oh, see? I whapped and stuff fell over. Oh well. I'll find it eventually. Keep looking there. Get the opal blue out. And I think for this guy, I'm just going to color him in. More so in the middle. And then I'm going to take a teeny paintbrush. Grab up just a little bit of water. And just move the watercolor pencil around so that it goes out to the edges. And then this way get more permanent. For the guy up there, I'm just going to put some water on my brush and pull some pigment off of the pencil and then just kind of go over spaces. I, on this one, I'm not going outside of the edge lines um, because I don't know exactly how I'm I have an idea of how I want to make it, but I don't know exactly. I'm sort of winging it. And then this guy. We'll do this way too. And if you pull it off of the pencil, you can get a deeper color because you can get more pigment that way. And that goes in there. And for the pumpkins, I like this chrome orange color. I don't know if you can see it. I'm still struggling with my lighting for my new camera. Sorry guys. But let's see, I want this guy. I'll color him in with that. And I'm concentrating mostly on the center because I want a slightly bigger paintbrush with a nice tip. This one's a new low paintbrush. I really like them. They keep their tips very well. I'm just getting some water on that and moving it out from the center to the edge. And if you find that your color's not moving anymore, it's because it has dried. And just pick up a little bit more water. And you can come back in and move it around some more. Do not, I repeat, please do not scribble over where you have wet your paper with your pencil. You will make mushy. And your paper will get all pilly. Your pencil might turn a little mucky. I'm not going to demonstrate that because I don't like to do that. 
<laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> this guy I want to be a little bit pinkish. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to combine red berry with the chrome orange. And what I'm going to do is I want the dominant color to be the chrome orange, so I'm going to start with the red berry. And I'm just putting the red berry where the shadows are. And it's okay if it's a li little outside of it. I just want a little bit of a hint. I know it looks like a lot, but it won't be when you mix it. And then I'm going over every place with the chrome orange, even over top of the red berry. And you can see they are not mixing when they're dry. However, add some water. I don't know if you can see that, but um, if you can, there's a line right here where this has the red berry in it and this does not. And then you can see as I move it around, it has a pinkish hue. I'm not hugely concerned if I go outside of the line. Just a little bit today. Here. Clean out the brush. This one I want to have a brownish cast to it, so I'm going to do the same thing. Just take out the chrome orange. With, not a dark brown, because then you'll get mud. Um, this one is ginger. I love ginger. Ginger is one of my friends. She's the greatest lady ever <laughs> so I'm going to put this in a band going across the middle I'm going to kind of lay it down a little bit heavier show you an another technique too um, that's dry and we'll just move it around and get it wet mostly in its place fan it out a little bit the wet brush directly from the chrome orange and be careful don't do it directly over your paper unless you're really concentrating because you can flick it on accident and then you'll have orange flickies all over your project. Okay. And you can see chrome 
chrome orange, chrome orange. But with the brown behind it, and the wet um, pigment over top of it, makes it very, very much different. And I don't know if you guys heard that or not, but that was my dog, Cheeseburger. She's over there on the floor, sleeping, and apparently she's dreaming of squirrels because she loves squirrels. I'm going to just go dry that off because that's now muddy. Excuse me. Hiccup me. Whatever. Okay. For the greens, there's tobacco. That seems like a neat color. I don't know about that. Mm, too brown. Okay, we're done with the chrome orange. blue bottle green that's all right I'm going to use that on these things and I don't know if my head's in the way sorry Okay, I would like, I'm going to put red berry on these long ones because I want them to be really bright. Ooh, look at that vibrant swatch of red. That's 
pretty. other leaves to be brownish because it's it is for fall so I'm gonna use umber Nutmeg. Here's nutmeg on this one. What do I want on that one? Oh, did I get any purple? Whoops. to make this one multi-tonal. Current in some places. And then I'm going to put the yellow sunshine some places and if they mix that's okay and put bot do I want bottle green? No. I want Ooh, let's put pine green. see what we get. Um, I start with the yellow first because if I don't want it to mix with other things that way it won't. I'll put a little bit towards the edges there so that it looks like it's actually turning and before you go back into a different yellow, um, yellow again wipe off your brush we all know how easily yellow contaminates. I want that like, part to stay nice and bright. And then we'll go in here. And we'll go in here. There. Oh, I forgot that guy. Um, no, I didn't. No, these ones are now. Hmm. 
Let's see what's on our brush. Anything? Not really. Um, let's make that guy a pale yellow. Citrus yellow. Really pale. Actually, going to add some mango to that. Maybe. There we go. Yeah, I like that. Stem. Zip. Two of them. Okay. I'm going to use the umber and directly from the pencil because right now with my weird lighting situation going on, I don't trust myself to be able to color inside of that with this. Even if I did sharpen it. Just kind of, you can just drop paint in with the brush. And I don't know if you can see that, but I have quite a bit of water laying on top. If you don't want that, just take a clean piece of your paper towel, press down, pull up, and voila. Again, clean piece of the paper towel, press down, pull up. If you move it, it will smear. Okay, so I'm not doing that one there because I'm going to actually cut this one out and do something different with it. So I'm going to use this one and I want it to be a really neat red. But I think I'm going to layer some pink behind it and I'm reaching for this coral so I'm going to put this coral behind it as the bottom layer and if you want your leaf just one color just do it one color you don't have to layer if you don't want to but it's always fun to try and experiment with different coloring techniques. Okay. And I'm going to use Ruby over top. This is Ruby by itself without the coral underneath it, just to give you an idea of what happened there. I'm going to pick up some water. This time I'm going to start from the outside and go in. Because I want to try to not go outside my lines, and I just did twice, but that's okay. There are 
always fixes for that type of thing as well. You can just take a very pale gray or a very gray blue and just kind of outline around it and make like a haze and it'll create like a type of a drop shadow. It also helps ground the image into the back the background so that it doesn't appear to be all floaty. But sometimes I like all floaty, so there's that. Okay, so I'm going to let those dry. I mean, they're dry already, but I like to let the um, pigment settle into the paper for a bit. Now for the card base, I have this fabric that I really like. I wanted to show you that, yes, you can put fabric on cards. It's okay. I probably should have ironed that. But that's okay, too. <laughs> Actually... That makes a really neat interior design element. Look at that. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to glue that in like there. And then I'm going to Mark my fabric. And I'm just using a washable fabric pen because I don't like to get graphite or pencil lead or what have you in the fabric. So, I'm stretch that out. And I want it to come to the inside of the card, so I'm actually going to draw a line on the outside of the card for me to follow. And I'm going to use, the edges are already pink because it came that way, because it's a country yard uh, fabric roll. And I'll put that upside down. Pay attention to your fabric pattern. <laughs> because I did want it to go this way. I think since it's fall, okay, let's see. There's upside down. And there's right side up. No, I don't like that as much. Not with this stamp. So, yay! <laughs> and I'm not just saying that so I don't have to do the other side. <laughs> so, okay. And I'm going to take my pinking shears and then I'm just going to the inside of the line. I'm going to line it up with the edge of my shears.
there. That's pretty good. Now, before I glue that in, I want to go along the outside edges with some greens to break up the white, the stark white line around there. So I'm going in first with green topaz and then with smoked emerald um, Harmony by Spectrum Noir water reactive dye, which means it's blendable. If you spray it with water, it will um, do that bleached out effect. I'm going in with the green topaz first because I want the lighter color towards the inside, but I don't want it to be a lighter version of the smoked emerald. Does that make sense? Smoked emeralds turn. And I know you're not going to see a whole lot of it because the fabric's going to cover it up, but it's better than to me than this dark white stuff. And I, oh, whoops! I always make sure to put Bring in some of the darker at the corners for depth. To get that off of your mat, you can either use a microfiber cloth or a wet wipe or baby wipe. See the difference that, that did. Oh. Okay, now I'm going to use I'm going to use the Fabri-Tac Power, power fuse. Um, it's a white glue, but this has um, 
some open fibers and I don't want the regular Fabri-Tac to go to seep through the, the weave of the fabric. So. I could use double-sided tape, but um, I don't, sometimes it leaves, you can see the outline through the fabric, which I don't like, and it can still lift up and off of the double-sided tape. Oops, meaning, so we'll just do a little bead along the edges. And I'll run some on the inside, but I'm going to smooth it out with my finger so that it doesn't leave bumps on accident. And my bottle is clogged again. So how are you guys today? It's nice and chilly here. I like that. Because then I can wear my hand warmers and fuzzy sweaters. I like layers. <laughs> so, what's your favorite method for adhering fabric? Do you even like to adhere fabric? I highly recommend giving it a shot. because it opens up a whole lot of interest in new things to do with your cards or journals. This could easily be a page in a journal or a scrapbook just because you do one thing does not mean that you can take what you see other people do and use it in your favorite thing. So, I've got some bumps there still. Mm. See if I can smooth it out with a spatula or a scraper. You can also try doing it with a bone folder. I like the scraper because it has a sharper edge and um, a semi-flexible platform, but it's still rigid. unclog my bottle for a minute real quick. Those fancy pin things to put in my glues. I can make one, but I just I don't want to. <laughs> Some things I'm just too lazy, Helen. <laughs> A little extra in the middle. The side fold place where I think I'm going to want to put my panel. I 
I also like the Fabri-Tac glues because they are not runny and watery and get oozy and gross. I'm going to pull it towards me so that it's nice and flat and straight and then I'm going to roll this down onto it and press. And flip it over and maneuver. I have like very little maneuvering time with the power fuse. That's the only problem with me. Yep, I peeled it up, folks. Usually the other method works for me, but I cut it crooked. So, and it's okay. too worried about it because it's supposed to be a rough ball look. You know, you can tell I stretched the fabric on accident, but it happens. This will just add to the charm. Mm. That's okay. This ribbon under here, like so. And do I want to wrap that around too? Now? Sure, why not? We'll add some interest, extra interest. I'm going to go like that. Yes, I perma pur purposefully left that up like that because I like it a little bit loose. I think it looks neat. Okay. Now for this guy. I think I want torn edges, so... And I'm not just going to willy-nilly tear them because I don't want to accidentally tear into my thing. I'm using a We Are Mem... Marie Keeper's tear guide. It comes in a set of three. Also, I ordered them from Margot's Paper and Crafts. So these are those. And you can just line it up. No, I'm not 
paid by Marcos Paper and Crafts to tell you to get things from them either. That's just where I go. Also, I work there, so. But I work there because I went there. <laughs> But don't call there this week and ask to talk to me. I'm on vacation. <laughs> Which is why you guys are getting so many videos this week. Yay! I like doing these. So you'll have to tell me if you want more, more, more. Or if you just don't care. <laughs> of that I'm just going straight in with the green topaz I think because I don't want it as dark as these edges because it's in front of those in the foreground but it's more concentrated so it came out that way anyway and I'm doing a different technique where I flick it directly on. So, <laughs> I don't know if you can hear Cheeseburger, but she is in very grumbly dream state right now. <laughs> Versus the coming in from the side. I'm going to be mailing this probably, so I want to leave it flat. Um, because most of my cards get sent to other countries. And unfortunately, uh, the difference in if I raise one thing, it changes my price of sending from around $4 to $26. So, I'm sorry guys, but... I had to go to making them flat. I don't want to. I just started sending too many. <laughs> but occasionally I'll still be like, I want to make a big one. A big, giant, puffy car. So I will. And you can help me by sending $26 cards if you want to go shop Moonfire Studios. I would really appreciate it. Mr. Moonfire would definitely really appreciate it. Because then he'll know that his snarkety production flip-throughs are not in vain. I thank you everyone for tuning in and watching and subscribing and if you're not subscribed 
please do so because it really does help us out and tells me that you do want me to do more creations and hopefully inspire something for someone. There. Okay, now I said I was going to do something different with this guy. What I am going to do is I have the paper discovery. This is the Slimline Card Builder Kit. Um, round panel edition set and these are by Olga Direct Rankle and I absolutely love her um, line she has dies stamps papers is that too close I don't know um, but I love everything that she does and I'm addicted to all of her stuff. So we are going to take, there is a circle frame die and then there's a panel die. So what I want to do is, initially I was just going to fussy cut around this up close and put this as a backdrop for the leaf and then you could see through that onto the background. But I kind of like that with the black and white still behind it. So now I have an issue of what do I do? Well, I shall circle cut this out, see what I think, and then if I still want to, I can still fussy cut around it. So, I have a Gemini Mini. Of course I do, right? <laughs> I'm just going to trim it down to fit in this slot. <laughs> it's kind of like when you put a magnified bubble on there. Yep, I got a wild hair. I thought, what if I pink around the edges of a circle? And I just messed up my circle, but don't tell anyone. Not the smartest thing for me to try to do, but there you have it. Something new, right? Well, 
Oh, that's too. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's cool. It's like a medallion now. Excuse me. Neat. Okay. I'm like stupid happy with myself. <laughs> and instead of trying to put glue on all the little bits, I'm just going to put it on the circle and then stick the little bits on top. Oops. Don't go off the edge of the circle. Jeez. What am I doing? There we go. I'm not putting any more glue on, I'm just moving it around with the nozzle. There. Okie dokie. a little bit of space around here you can see the cutout but I'm not upset with that okay and I'm put a little extra glue on there for the cut out bits to stick onto the card. Because it's the gel uh, solvent, whatever fabric tack, I have more maneuverability time. I can put it exactly where I want to. There. I was going to put these little um, corners on here, but since I didn't do, if this wasn't such a busy pattern, this would have worked better. Maybe if this was solid or an ombre, that would have looked better. That looks cool still though, but maybe it's because they're solid, not cut out. I do kind of like the corners on there. Okay, we'll try that too. You can always cut things out. And if you don't like it, use it for something else. I'm not sure why there's two. I think they're identical. Yep, so you can cut two at a time. I don't really want to put green around those because that's too much green. I think I want to pick up the reds. I'm going to go get a red. 
And because I didn't know which red would go better, I have a red berry, Chinese red, and Bordeaux. I'm going to try them on this guy. I like the Bordeaux the best, so I'm going to go with that. Don't stick my hand or sleeve in red ink. Once this is all inked up, I just throw it in the washing machine, and I have others that I rotate when one, when some are washing. So. Pretty cool. Cheeseburger, you finally woke up, huh? I bet she wants to go O-U-T. Something extra. Okay, guys, so I put on top of the maple leaf glossy accents and it's drawing, but hopefully, you can see the effect. And I'll put stills up of it. Um, at the very least when it's completely dry so not probably for a few hours um, but what I am going to do is I did a little pumpkin um, 
stamp. I just colored it in the same way I did everything else and pinked around the edges. Uh, this I want to put here. Um, but I don't want it to be flat like everything else. But I don't want it to be as shiny and puffy as the glossy accents. So I'm going to use a Sakura glaze pen. This one is clear. Um, if you can find them, get them. I think they are still orderable by themselves. Um, but in my area, they're harder to find. So I always have to have um, a store like order them in for me. Which um, Marcos can do that. That's where I get just about everything. <laughs> And then I'm just going to color in the pumpkin and get it started. I've had this one for a little while because I kind of hoard them because they're so hard to get. But it puts a really nice clear glaze over top. Mm. And I don't like to stop once I get it started because it can make it streak. So unless I kind of want that streaky effect on the pumpkin though, it'll add a lot of texture to it. My watercolors weren't completely dry because it's kind of picking up some of the stuff, but let me show you. Um, you can see where I put the glaze pen on it, and there's the sheen. So I also like it because if um, I think something is dull, like the pumpkin color, it will really brighten it up. going a little fast over this pumpkin because I like when it leaves streaks on it because then it looks more like the pumpkin skin versus an entire solid coating which you can achieve with the pen you just have to go slower and uh, don't start and stop a lot and don't go back over where you previously went I'm just kind of dotting in places to get extra, almost like a glistening dewdrop effect.
and when you first open these, especially the glazed ones, when you first open them, I've lost this one, but on the tip will be a tiny wax um, cap. If you can not lose that, put it back on top because it helps keep the tip from um, drying out a lot faster and chunks getting stuck in it, which I, I've had this one for like a good while now and without the wax cap. And it's been fine and just kind of roll it and break it off a little bit but it's uh it's all good so but the wax cap will help that and there is the pumpkin with that texture on it oops sorry I think he looks pretty cool and I'm just gonna glue him right there and I think I want him a tiny bit up with the shadow behind it so I'm actually going to use my glue gun and put some glue blobs on the back give it a little bit of dimension to help counter with that one. And I want you right about there. That looks good. And I'm just only slightly pressing. There. And then this looks really empty to me. I didn't want to cover it up with anything, but I have this really fabulous um, blue twine that came in one of my chapter one papers um, journal kit boxes. I believe it was mm, possibly the dinky journal kit, but they don't have that anymore. But anyway, off topic, um, if anyone knows where I can find find or get this it's a really light blue um, really fibrous twine and I really want more of it um, because I love to use it in everything I've been trying to hoard it but I just can't help it so it goes with stuff so well and this picks up the green and picks up the blue so, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a little bit and I'm going to just kind of loop it back and forth so that you end up with that. Um, I don't know if you can see that. And then I'm going to pinch it in the middle and um, I don't want to give up a bunch of the length because you can you can tie it so that it's knotted in the middle but um if I do that it's going to actually shorten it slightly so I'm just going to put a glue blob down just a little one actually I'm going to pinch it together and put some hot glue on it and where I want it to be a faux knot just kind of wrap it around a little bit and then let it cool off slightly so you don't burn your fingers or you can twist it on both ends you don't want to touch the glue and that should help it to stay um, focus you don't want to focus I don't want to put my hands in the right way apparently in that um, knotted space but I just do that and then I stick a little blob of glue Put that on top of it. And 
and kind of smush it down. Um, if you have glue strings or strands, just take your heat tool. it and they will like shrink up and disappear and because there's now glue showing because I have all of this white space here and then over here I'm going to use a uh, vintage Nouveau drops um, this one is chalk stick the vintage ones are matte as in not shiny versus the new ones that are glossy. Okay. So all I'm doing is putting almost making it like a band instead of a drop to go around where I glued. And I'm not actually putting a bunch on, I'm just spreading it with the tip. And then it kind of self-levels, so there's that. And there it is. go um, and thank you for watching and following along and hopefully you got to craft along maybe using different stamps or maybe you tried some of your own fabric uh, to do something neat with so I hope you enjoyed and we'll uh, follow along later so thanks very much for watching and please like and subscribe and comment uh, to let me know what we can work on, what we can do next, uh, how we can grow together. So um, thanks very much. See you next time. Bye.